What's up and welcome back to another Puzzle Insider video. I'm Greg from Puzzle Wonder. Today we'll talk about three amazing discontinued puzzles, forbidden moves in puzzle solving, the history of puzzles part two. We'll have an interview with none other than the legendary Yua Saka and an interview with the puzzle YouTuber Rose DM. Lastly, we'll talk a bit about the puzzle of the month, which is the Lotus by Will Stribos. Let's go. There's a lot of puzzles that get released but never get re-released again. And these three puzzles are puzzles that were available once, but now, sadly, they aren't. One of them is the Angel Box by Will Stribos. It was produced, I think, 10 years ago. And it's like a legendary puzzle. It's a huge sequential discovery puzzle box. And I always heard about it, but I never could try it. I wish I could, I really wish I could. And it's extremely rare, like the number of copies of this puzzle is very limited and also I tried to convince Will to maybe make some more and he said that it's impossible to make due to some production issue but let's hope for the best. The second one is The Big Ben from Mr. Puzzle Australia, which is an amazing sequential discovery puzzle, really one of the prettiest ones I ever tried. I used to have it myself, it's an amazing puzzle and I wish more people could play it. The third one is Revome Silver, one of the most difficult Revome puzzles, which is sadly discontinued. This puzzle is like for crazy masochistic people, which is uh, most of us puzzlers, <laughs> but it's really an outstanding puzzle and I think everyone that likes Revome should try Revome Silver. So I hope someone hears this and maybe tries to produce more copies and let's move on to the next article. Some puzzles have questionable moves. There's one particular move that I hate seeing in puzzles, especially if it costs more than $100. And that is heat moves and smash moves and whatever involves damaging the puzzle or, you know, just hitting a puzzle that's very expensive feels really wrong to me. So what moves you don't like seeing in puzzles? Guys, tell me in the comments and hopefully puzzle designers watching this video will see what you guys think and maybe abstain from the moves you said. In this edition of the mini series Puzzle Hunter, I will continue explaining and telling you about the history of puzzles. In the last episode, we stopped at Stomachian, so let's keep going from here. The next puzzle that was invented happened around year 100-400, and that's a Roman tree clock. It so happens that this kind of puzzle lock was very popular in Rome back then, which is pretty cool. I think Rome is a very interesting civilization. After that, a Muslim engineer, Al Jazari, first documented a combination lock in his book, The Book of Knowledge and Mechanical Devices. That was in the beginning of the 13th century. In the year 1500, a disentanglement puzzle that is actually available today, called the Chinese rings, have been invented by Geronimo Cardan. Although there's been evidences that other disentanglement puzzles have been invented prior to that. In the year 1636 in Germany, there's been another disentanglement puzzle called Solomon's Seal. And then in the end of the 17th century, in the end of the 17th century, the first burr puzzle was invented and actually Actually, burr puzzles are still available today and have been improved so much in the past years. 1698 was the first documentation of such a puzzle, but the origin of it remains unknown. Then we have Spanish puzzle knives. These are knives that have a secret opening mechanism, originated in year 1699. In the year 1743, we have the first iteration of what is known now as the Tangram puzzle. This puzzle then spread to the world after being a gift to a certain captain. In 1790, we have the first iterations of sliding and pentomino style puzzles. These were dissection puzzles you need to put together in a certain shape. We'll continue this series in part three of the puzzle history in the Puzzle Hunter edition. Let me know in the comments which one you think is the coolest puzzle and let's continue to the designer of the month. I'm extremely happy I could get an interview with the amazing puzzle designer Yosaka. is personally one of my favorite 2D packing puzzle designers in the world and I think he deserves his name as a legendary puzzle designer. Yosaka's first puzzle was Jigsaw 29. It was actually created as a school assignment. Yosaka graduated from Art University in 2019 and he likes Edward Hopper's paintings and he also occasionally paints. His favorite puzzles are Cast Radix and Cast Rattle from Hanayama. Both puzzles had beautiful solutions and I enjoyed them very much. His favorite two-dimensional puzzle is Rectangular Jam by Hirokazu Iwasawa, which won the honorable mention at the 2005 puzzle design competition. It didn't play most of the two-dimensional packing puzzle, except for the famous one. I was also very interested to hear Yuasaka's process of making a puzzle and 
I was actually blown by it. When I make a puzzle, I first sketch a lot of meaningless shapes and abstract images on paper. Basically, the subject is music and things around me. And when I can draw a good looking shape, I refine it by combining it with the puzzle idea I had at the time. For example, Olio 10 was created with the image of Michel Petrucciani's Olio. Bird 11 was made from a sketch of bird dropping. The idea of puzzle gimmick often comes up by chance, so I still don't know how to come up with it intentionally. It takes about half a year to a year to make one puzzle, but I make several puzzles at the same time. As long as I can come up with an idea for a puzzle, I will continue to work on it. And also, there may be a possibility that Yuasaka comes up with puzzles other than 2D backing puzzles. Thank you very much Yuasaka for the answers and also I want to thank one of our viewers Zohar for helping me come up with questions to Yuasaka. This month creator of the month is Ross DM. Ross DM makes videos only about Hanayama puzzles whether it's solving videos or solution videos of a certain Hanayama puzzle. He started the channel after watching Chris Ramsey's videos actually after watching the Lotus puzzle solution which we'll talk about later in the video. After googling the price of the Lotus puzzle Ross decided it might be a better idea to start with something smaller and after a bit of searching he stumbled upon Hanayama puzzles that were priced very well had a big organized selection of them and looked pretty good. I'm not 100% certain whether I always wanted to video myself solving puzzles like Chris did in the Lotus video. Not long after starting the channel, Ross recognized that filming himself solving the puzzles gives him accountability to solve them and he's not sure if he'd be able to solve them without filming. After a few months of having the channel, Ross also started to upload solution videos to the Hanayamas. And he takes pride in his solutions as he tries to make the most accurate and simple to follow solution videos on YouTube. I felt like sticking with Hanayamas gave the channel a bit of structure. I'm a bit OCD and I like orders so the idea of having the same sized boxes and similar sized puzzles ordered behind me probably kept me stuck on them. Plus once you own a few you have to complete the full collection. His favorite puzzle YouTuber is Chris Ramsey thanks to the inspiration to start his own channel. His favorite puzzles are the metal, key 2 and the chess pieces all by Hanayama. On the top end Ross likes the cylinder puzzle and enigma. His most hated puzzle is Rotor. There's just no satisfaction in solving it. Too many options, too many moves, too difficult to track, no. Just all around annoying and literally no. <laughs> Thank you very much Ross for the interview and let's move on to the puzzle of the month. This episode puzzle of the month is pretty exciting to me since it's one of the first puzzles I have ever tried. This is The Lotus by Will Strabos. 30 years ago, Will Strabos came with an idea for a puzzle called the Yen Puzzle. This puzzle was a wooden block with a bolt holding a Yen coin from Japan. Over the years, Will Strabos added more and more mechanisms, which 10 years ago resulted in the invention and release of the Lotus puzzle, one of his most renowned sequential discovery puzzles. At first it was very difficult to solve this puzzle as the only thing William said is that the goal is to understand why the puzzle is called Lotus. This was 10 years ago so puzzles were a lot more cryptic than today. Now that the puzzle is more commercialized, the goal is actually revealed in a more straightforward way. The Lotus solve video from Chris Ramsey is actually one of his most popular solve videos so far with more than 20 million views. To this day, this puzzle remains one of my favorite puzzles and it has a lot of sequential discovery, a lot of mind-blowing tricks and it looks pretty good. And keep in mind, this is like a 10-year-old copy. Something that not a lot of people know is that we'll change the design a little bit, changing one small feature over the years. So there's actually two versions of the same Lotus puzzle. And that's it for today's Puzzle Insider video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd really appreciate your likes, your comments, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. If you have any ideas for future articles, please let me know in the comments and I'll come up with articles for you to enjoy. See you next time.